for a tutorial for NoCode HQ and today I'm gonna show you how to um, basically sync a blog uh, or any other kind of data source you have within your bubble app um, with your Google Sheet or a Google Sheet um, and we'll do basically connect both of these uh, uh, databases or both of these services using Parabola and what we want to do basically we want to update uh, data from our bubble application every day uh, or every hour however often you would like to and update this data on our Google Sheet which will then be used as a database for an application mobile app we will build with Glide. So let's say for example um, your bubble app has a blog and a new blog post is released every day and uh, you also want to create a mobile uh, app um, where the up-to-date blog is displayed. So there would be many other use cases for this tutorial um, basically syncing any other form of data within your bubble app to your Glide application using Parabola and a Google Sheet but I'm just gonna use a blog for now and so what you will need, you will need a bubble account um, you will need a Parabola account, a Google account, a Glide account and you can create uh, accounts for all of these services for free and once you did that the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into your bubble app or create a new app depending on um, where you want to start off from. So I'm just going to create a new app and I'm going to call the app um, blog app no code HQ. Okay, and let's just click on create a new app. And uh, I'm going to be brought into the um, our, applica our application editor. I'm just going to start with a blank page and I'm not going to design any anything in our bubble app. You could of course um, design the app now or if you're coming from an existing bubble application your app will be designed already um, but the, the point and the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to basically uh, export data from your bubble app using the bubble API um, using Parabola to a Google Sheet and that on a recurring basis. So that's the focus um, of this tutorial. So let's go ahead and let's go to data actually and let's create a new type. So let's say in this case, in our case, our startup or our uh, web app, whatever, has um, a block which appears every day. So let's just call this block. And this block consists of a title, uh, which is a text, a subtitle, which is also a text, um, an image maybe. Okay, uh, and let's also have an author. Okay, and this is basically um, the data fields for the data type block. So. Uh, each block consists of these four data fields. What we're gonna do now, we're on actually gonna um, go to settings and to API and we're gonna expose a data API for our block. So what does that mean? Um, we're exposing an API for our bubble application for the data type block, which means that we can read, create or update block data within our bubble application using our custom uh, API, which I'm going to show you in a second, and let's also generate a new API token. Uh, you can give it a token label if you want. I'm just going to enter something, okay? And what I'm also going to do, I'm going to just push this development version to live, so deploy current version to live. Um, just click deploy, and now we have a live application, okay? Let's actually go to data now, and under app data, I'm going to switch to the live database, and I'm just going to insert a few blocks. So I'm going to um, let's just refresh this page quickly. Okay, so now we should have the block field here and let's just, I'm just gonna, give me a few seconds, I'm just gonna add some random block data. One small thing, I forgot to add the most important field actually, we have a, a title and a subtitle, but of course we wanna have a content, basically the main body of the text. So let's just add that and we're gonna call that content. Um, you wanna create that, I'm just gonna go back and insert the data now. So I've just added two uh, blog posts basically and uh, let me switch to the development version now. What you want to do next, so basically what, we, what we've done now, we created our blog data type and I've just created two blocks. Um, what you want to do now, you want to create um, a Google Sheet. So I went, I did already and I went to uh, Google Sheets and created a new sheet. I just called it blog app, you can call it whatever you like. And what we're going to do now, we're going to add the same fields um, that are also within our bubble uh, uh, application for the data type blog. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rename this sheet to blog post, okay? And I'm going to in, uh, insert all the same fields we have. So all we have is a title for our blog post, we have a subtitle, uh, we have an image, an author, and also the content. So these are all the same 
data fields that we have within our bubble application. And we want to basically sync um, the data from our bubble application to our uh, uh, Google Sheet and that on a daily basis. So the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, go to Parabola and you want to create a new project. And that's what I did already. And currently we have a blank project here. And what we're going to do, we're going to start off by searching for an API import. So select an API import and just drag it onto the screen. Okay. And we can start configuring our API. So let's click on that. What we want to do, we want to get data. Okay. We want to get data from our bubble, uh, basically our bubble database. And we're going to use this standard structure. So if I'm going into the bubble um, API reference, you just want to copy this here. So get like this. Okay. Let's just copy this. Let's go back to Parabola, just enter that here. You have to replace this part with your app name. So in our case, our app is called blog app no code hq. Okay. Dot bubble apps.io slash api slash 1.1. Then the object you want to change. In our case, we want to change the object if we go back to data blog. So blog. Okay, let's go back. We want to change the endpoint blog. For the authentication, we're gonna add um Let's actually add a custom header. The header key is going to be authorization. The, he the header value is going to be bearer. And then you can just copy the API key that we generated. So under general, no, under API, just copy this key. Let's go back, add a space and enter this key. And that's basically it. And let's show the updated results. So what should happen now? Um, we should be able to fetch data from our bubble app, okay, using this API. And that worked. We have a response. Um, it doesn't look nice, but we have results. You can see author, Noel, image, and so on. Um, let's actually go ahead now and start working with this data. So I'm going to close this, okay? So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to add a JSON flattener. So what you want to do, you just want to search for JSON flattener. Just drag that here, okay? Connect the API import to our JSON flattener, and we will now have access to the data that was uh, imported in the first step. So let's just click on the JSON flattener. We can select the column. In this case, we just have the response column. Let's click show update results. And we want to expand that list into new rows for the response results. Okay, so let's just click that, show update results again. And what should happen now? It, the, basically, the response is taken and two rows are created because in our case, we have two um, blog posts and we have all the information. So we have the author for the first and for the second blog post. The two images are fetched. We have our response.results.subtitle, so the subtitle of the blog, the title of the blog, um, all this data brought by Bubble, the content of the blog, and some more information. And basically, we have turned this information uh, from the API into a more readable format. Okay, let's just close that. Um, I also want to remove a few columns, so let's just search for column uh, filter. It's going to add that. Let's connect the JSON flattener to the column filter. And I want to remove some filters. So I want to uh, remove some columns. I want to remove the response column, the um, created by column, the modified date, the ID, the type, the cursor, the count, and the remaining, because we only want to have these six columns. Let's just refresh that. Okay, that looks a lot better. Um, let's just close that now. Let's also use a text merge. So I'm just going to drag it on top here. And let's collect the column filter to the text merge. Let's take a look at text merge. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to create a new column. And I'm going to call this column image. And I'm going to say, okay, the text for this column should be HTTPS. Okay. And then I want to use the variable, which is response.results.image. Okay. And let's show update results. And um, let me just explain what, what, I, what I did here. Because Bubble gives us the image just with two forward slashes. And this is a format which won't be readable uh, for our Glide application. And it's generally not readable for a browser. So what we want to do, we just want to add the HTTPS value to this data. So what I'm going to do, or what I'm doing, I'm doing a text merge. I'm adding a new column called image. And I'm just adding HTTPS to this variable, which is response.results.image. And we are now getting a great URL which we can use for our um, Glide application. So that works really nicely. Let's close that. I want to add a column column filter again. So let's just add a column filter again. Just connect the text merge to the column filter, and let's select the column filter. 
And now I want to remove our initial response that results that image field because now we have a new image field. Let's just remove that. Show update results. And now we have our six columns, which are all nicely formatted. So that works really nicely. And the last thing we want to do, we now want to export this to our Google Sheet. So let's just search for an export or yeah, Google Sheets export, drag it onto your screen, connect the, the last step to the Google Sheets. Okay. You want to connect your Google account and select the file. So I'm going to search or choose the blog app. And in this case, what we're going to do, we want to override the whole sheet. We could choose append to sheet, but that would mean we would always append the data we fetch to the bottom of the sheet, but that would mean we would have duplicate entries. So we want to override the whole sheet. Okay, let's choose that. Let's show update results. So as you can see, what is this gonna what this is gonna do? It's gonna add six columns with these titles. The titles actually or the he headings, what they say doesn't actually matter. What is important is the data. And that should work now. And let's close that actually and let's publish our parabola flow. So let's click on publish and uh, let's run it now. So let's click run now and let's just take a look what happens. So we did already. Okay. Okay, as it, sa it says succeed. So let's take a look at our Google Sheet. And awesome, as you can see, it works. We have our um, headers fetch from our parabola, so response and results, the subtitle, title, uh, create day, and so on, and the data for the two rows. So we have amazing first block, how going no could be serial founder. So our two blocks that will fetch, as well as the image in a correct format that we can use. Okay, um, and it's a correct link as you can see. So that works really nicely. Let's just quickly add a new block entry just to see if everything works. So let's, for example, say you added a new block in your Bubble application. I'm just gonna um, enter a random block. So let's switch to our live database, go to blog. I'm just going to make a random entry. So a third blog. Um, welcome to the third blog. Okay, and let's just save that or create that. I'm not going to add an image. And if we go back to Parabola, let's just run this flow again. And now what should happen as we have three entries in our bubble database, Parabola should met, uh, fetch three blog posts and send these three blog posts to our sheet. And as you can see, it says exports three rows. Okay, and if we go to our sheet now, now we have the third row of data here, but no image because we didn't add an image. But as you can see, that works perfectly fine. And what you could do now, you could go back to Parabola and say, okay, um, I wanna schedule this whole thing and I wanna add a rule. And I want to schedule it once per day or every hour, whatever you like. And now basically what Parabola will do, it will run this at a specific frequency and fetch the newest block or all blog posts basically um, and override the whole sheet so just the, so, so that the new blog posts are shown every time uh, or every day in your um, Google Sheet. So um, as you can see, we have our, um, our recent data. And what we're going to do now, that's going to be quite simple. We're just going to create a simple Glide application, a one-page mobile app. So what you want to do, you want to go to Glide, click on Create a New App, and choose the Block App Sheet. I did it already. So I'm going to go to Glide. I'm just going to click on Reload Sheet. And uh, let's click Yes. As you can see, Glide recognizes our three blocks here. And you can change the style of that. So let, maybe let's change that to Columns. Okay. The, um, the title should be the title which we have to response the results the title the details should be the subtitle okay and the image should just of course be the image as you can see the image is already recognized and is perfectly integrated because we have converted it into a readable format okay and a user can now click on a detailed view okay and let's change the title here so the title should be the title details should be the subtitle and the image should be the image of course uh, we can remove the image here and let's add the con uh, basically the author. So let's have the author. Let's change the label to author. And it's going to be Noel. And I'm also going to add another rich text. And this rich text is going to be the content. And that's basically it. So we have our uh, blog application ready. Um, so if we go back, we have our three blocks here. How, for example, this one, we have our image, our title, our subtitle, the author, and basically the text. And all of this is fetched from our Google Sheet here. And um, yeah, that's basically it. We could go ahead now, change the tab, for example, change it, change the icon to, let's have a, maybe a book like this. 
change the label to blog post. Okay, you can change the accent color of the whole app and uh, if you want you can add a chat functionality by just dragging that here and you could add even more tabs if you want to do that but that's completely uh, up to you but overall as you can see uh, we were able to connect uh, our glide application to our bubble application on a regular basis uh, using parabola and uh, it's a great way of automating processes so for example again as i mentioned before your bubble app uh, you have your bubble app and you create a new blog post every day. Um, Parabola runs every day, let's say, and fetches them all blog posts, inserts them into your Google Sheet, and your Glide app will display uh, these blog posts in a nice way for your mobile app. And all of that is automatic and you don't have to touch your Glide application once. So it's a great way of automating um, your workflows. And yeah, you could do something similar for other kinds of data. So let's say it's products that you want to regularly add to your mobile app uh, or it's uh, courses, events, whatever you like. All kinds of data can be synced from your bubble app uh, basically on a regular basis and inserted into your Glide application. And you can uh, publish your Glide application, share it, and you have a mobile app um, for your bubble data uh, in no time. So. Yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, I hope everything was clear and you learned something. And I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial with NoCoHQ. Bye.